Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. We're going to the beginning of November 1982. We were last playing Amadar on the Atari VCS. What's next? Well, coming up next is the latest issue of Analog Magazine. Let's go right into it. This one's going to be a fun one because Analog Magazine is 8th uh, issue, November issue. You most likely got this one when it was out sometime late October, possibly. But uh, look at this. The front cover is like electric computer. It looks awesome. And we have budget program review, uh, CTIA, GTIA graphics. Uh, we have graphic violence, which sounds amazing. I want to see what in the world that is. Beginner basic and then stuntman. At least it all boasts here on the front. Doesn't the front of this, uh, the cover of this magazine just look so simplistic from, from a better, simpler time? Let's crack it open and see what's going on. Over on the left, left is some mosaic RAM system for your Atari. Plus, uh, I, I brought the cursor out here so you can see. Does everyone see the little uh, like uh, coffee smudges here on the magazine? Whatever the scans came in. Very, very quaint. I love that. Welcome, everyone, here for the show. That's uh, We're going to be reading the Analog uh, Computing Magazine. That's uh, Atari uh, Magazine uh, and a lot of games. Or uh, Atari Newsletter and a lot of games. All right, and then over here on the right side is Ghosts Encounters. And if uh, you're not familiar with Ghost Encounters, we've already played this one. This is a sequel to another game. And I'll just show the quick gameplay of what it's like. Ghost Encounters was done by Jack Verson. The, the first game that he did was a game called Action Quest. And this game and Ghost Encounters were kind of like if you were going to take adventure, but instead of doing like a single pixel, you're moving around as this, this, this ghost character you, that you can see here. And th the game is kind of interesting because every move or every room you go to is a puzzle style um, room. You know, can you get to the end? Can you get the treasure? In, in a way, it's similar to Venture too. But uh, Ghost Encounter was pretty refreshing because as the sequel to Action Quest, it did something we've never seen before, which is the character that you play as can transform into different things. In other words, your ghost can become a gun and, and different items that will help you s solve puzzles transforming your character and we've seen this with like text adventure games but to see this done with a, a a video game in action form is pretty cool yeah he does look like that from from the gameplay footage yeah really funny all right so that's a ghost encounter over here i'm surprised we saw an ad for it it's pretty cool that we get an ad for that one way to go jack verson let's keep flipping on in the latest issue of analog computing over here on the left side is the compute second book of atari where they're boasting all the programs you can get, in, including some help with, with basic, uh, sound, joysticks. Uh, and uh, th this, is, this is essentially a, a book to help you program on the Atari computer. This magazine is made for the consumer that has an Atari 400 or 800 right now, right? Yeah, I hope it's not fun, fun, fun guy around. There's a fun guy around right here. And on the right side is the table of contents. I'm just gonna go right past it because we'll be going through everything. This editorial on the left side is interesting by John Bell. He's bringing up something called computer literacy, which is really funny when you think of the term, because at this point they're saying that all the kids that are growing up with these computers are going to have the ability to um, uh, be more versed in computers than we are today. But now it feels like knowing that the, 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 what the future is, it feels like we're almost going backwards on that. There's not really a lot of people that are super amazing at computers. But here, this younger generation, they were just latching on to programming for, for these th these computers and learning all the languages. Or maybe that's because I'm, we're just reading so many magazines that have it. And then uh, over here on the right side, they have a, a, a bug alert where you can get some, if you want to fix one of the bugs in your system. And then we have a few letters to the editorials for different things about... Uh, and uh, it's, What's interesting is a few of the, the, the letters over here on the right side is... There are actual tech questions, like concerning the band that the ro ro rolls up on the screen of the VCS machines, um, how to fix the interference. You know, so it's it's actual tech support in instead of just people writing in and saying how cool their Atari home computer is, which is awesome. All right, let's keep going. And here on the next one is another 
ad for SSI. This is the very first video game we played where you could storm the beaches of Normandy. $40 is pretty good. Um, one of the higher end games you could get on, across any home computer. And this one was available not just on the Atari. It was on several others as well. And over here on the right side, this is pretty cool. Uh, this right here is a game called Maniac that I've talked about on the show. And I think it's the same one. It's for if you have 32K in your system. Apparently, I bet it was going too fast. And so this is the code for Maniac. We played this on the show. Maniac was a type in game. And the, uh, the, the, the type in game was a two-player simultaneous berserk game. So th this, this, th this is Maniac again. Uh, it shows you how popular it was because I loved it. I gave it high marks, for, especially for a type in game. But right here, this is the way you could program it in if you have 32K on your Atari system. Love it. All right, what else does our magazine have for us? Oh, coming up next is Dungeon Quest. The Temple of Abshai over here on the left side. Slaying monsters should be mostly fun in games. And on the Atari, we've already seen a lot of, of the Tem Temple of Ab Abshai games. Now, I'm, su I'm surprised they're bringing up the first one. Because Temple of Abshai is the first main game of the Dungeon Quest series. At this point on the show, across all home computers, we've seen a lot of... Of Dungeon Quest. Uh, the sequel to this one, the main sequel, uh, Hellfire Warrior, was uh, has already been out as well. And then there's tons and tons of add-ons for this that you can play, including Morlock's Tower that we've seen, Date Stones of Rin, Curse of Ra, Keys of Asheron, and Dangerous in Drindisti. All those are there, and some of the really good ones have been here on the Atari home computer because they allow you to plug in your Atari VCS joystick and, and play a role-playing game, top-down view. Got a little bit of art artwork here, too. Nice. Way to go, Epics or Automated Simulations, what have you. And then, yeah, it's it's an ad for TRS-80, Apple, and IBM, too. I think only Temple of Abshai is on IBM. The other versions aren't there. Over here on the right side, we got some new products coming up. The Program Doctors. There they are. There's a lot of things on this to unpack of what they consider the, the newest products or the newest things that, to come out like uh, K-Bytes Crazy Shootout, and we've already seen that one, very well done, Berserk variant, and Crazy Critters, cra all the crazy K-Razy games we've already seen on the show. Those are some great ones. And then, <laughs> what would you do if you won $25,000? <laughs> Here in November 1982, there already is a contest, the, the, the one we played on the Atari VCS, it's the Sword Quest series is out there. That makes me think of these uh, 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 the, the winning a lot of money or for, from a contest. Yeah, that's right. Those were all standalone games on the Dungeon Quest series. And the they're, they're meant to be something that you're adding on and bringing your character over to be able to uh, play with those. That's awesome. Yeah, those are expansions of Hellfire Warrior, you bet. And then we have a few other games that are coming out. We're not going to be playing My First Alphabet, Astro Chase, Airstrike. Uh, Airstrike, I believe, we already have seen. And then over here on the right, we got a screenshot for uh, Track Attack. Hey, there it is. This was really, really ambitious. R amazing. Apple II and on the Atari home computer. Track Attack, it starts off just like a, a, a top-down, almost like a maze game because you're playing as a train, but then it breaks into, when you actually get on the train, it turns into a 2D platformer, a scrolling platformer. It, it is clunky as, as all get out, but well, I mean, what can you expect for right now a 2D platform? But it, it blew me away. But then they have a few other games that Border Bun's done over here on the bottom. Choplifter, still one of the best you could play right now. We've only seen that on two uh, places, Apple II and the Atari Home Computer. David's Midnight Magic's another one, a great pinball game. Sea Fox, Star Blazer, Serpentine, Dueling Digits. Yeah. Back in the dog days of the summer of 1981, we wanted quality software. Yes. Now it's November 1982. All right, let's keep going. After that, they bring us some more, more games coming out uh, or uh, are out now. Preppy. Micro Printer, and we'll see Preppy in a sec. And then Pirate Adventure. I don't know why they said Pirate Adventure. Oh, yeah, there's a, a screenshot for Preppy. It's very reminiscent of Frogger. A top-down view, very, very well done. 
and it's a kind of a different idea if you want to think of it that way because you're a frogger but you're going after golf balls that you actually are playing as a preppy in college and then they have oh coming up soon wizard of war we haven't seen that yet and then uh crossfire deluxe invaders so yeah this is just breaking down lots of the big companies and you see rockland there gabelli software idsi all the stuff that's coming out by, by those companies there's pool 400 that we've seen here on the show um uh, kind of a choppy pool version i'd still say one of the best uh you could play is the the ones on home console uh th that was released that was i actually thought that was a little bit uh, faster all right so then over here we got trivia trek poker oh, i was mostly yeah it's it's mostly gambling video games and it's all right oh yes preppy is great and i'm i'm, I'm excited to see preppy too because it, it it must have been a big hit uh, it, i i really enjoyed it and yeah over here poker tourney don't really care about that and then we, we have an ad for slick stick <laughs> I, it can't be stressed enough how many joysticks and other peripherals are out there by third-party companies that you could buy for a, a, for home computers all over. This magazine's mostly focused on the Atari 400 and the Atari 800 home computer, but there's a lot more other computers out there and a lot more other games with peripherals. All right, keep on going. We got The Adventures of Professor Von Chip in Orby. Adorable. He built a Frankenstein robot. An even uglier one with more than your Atari and educational software. Player missile graphics tutorial. And he's beating me at all my best games. <laughs> nice. Quick comic inside the game or inside the magazine. And then over here is the financial wizard. Don't care. We'll flip on. There is a lot of very impressive software and applications that you can have, but I'm mostly focused on the video games. Over here are some programmer aids that you can have for your Atari. And then over here on the right side, we have just a few ads for uh, um, a few a few different things like the Magic Storybook, which is essentially a, a, a way to enjoy animation or do animation on your home computer, and then uh, replacing your keypad with a key real keyboard. Nice. I love flipping through and seeing what was what would have been cool or unique right now. All right, let's keep going to the next one. And next is. Data perfect. Yeah, we're gonna breeze by that. And then over here is a way to list 38 column format or make it easier to see. We can breeze by that too. These magazines also are showcasing most of the code that these uh, these magazines came with. Code that you could put in your computer, type it in, run the code, and actually you know run software or games and even debug your your software right here from the magazine. That existed like right here. The next one's a disk tool. We're just gonna breeze by that. We don't need a disk tool right now. And then you can see it's going through lots of figures giving you uh, how to use the disk tool. And yep, still going and still going. Yep, data check. <laughs> so much. And then over here, we got a few ads for the Atari disk backup system. And you would need that. The disk backup is a thing. Um, this can be prone to failure. You're most likely going to have the cassette tapes that will fail, but um, yeah, you would want to back up those discs. And then we have uh, putting audio in your programs over here on the right side. This um, is really important for the Atari home computers. It's some of the best sound and music we've seen from these systems. Music really isn't a thing. There is There really isn't a whole lot of music on other computers right now. And then we got some budget programs, which we don't care about either. <laughs> we'll keep going. And then over here, we have our first type-in video game, Stuntman. Climbing to the top of every building he can find. And here's the code. Type it right in and play. Here on the show, we've played about or roughly 80 video games that were type-in video games. We did not type them in ourselves. Someone else did that for us. Thank you very much. And we were able to still play the games. Over here on the right side, we got an ad for Artworks. And there it is, Golden Gloves. Boxing. Now, Golden Gloves is one of a handful of several boxing-style games. I refer to them as sports-based fighting games because they're kind of like the, the, the origin of one-on-one -on -one fighting games. Uh, at this point, we've played about six games that have been sports-based fighting games or boxing games. At this point, though, the majority of video games that are like fighting would be things like uh, we saw Warrior in the arcade. 
or swords in the arcade. <laughs> That's right, Paul. Yeah, most of them were typing in pray. <laughs> uh, you'd be debugging the game, but if you, it did help you learn how uh, uh, programming in a game works. That's one of the main features of it. But some other fighting games that you could be playing right now would be Dino Wars on the Coco or the, the, the really bad hashed version of Dino Wars on the Atari home computer, which was Dino Battle. And the really, really good ones were on the Apple II. Swashbuckler, which is a sword-based one-on-one fighting game. And then um, Biles, the, the Biles Toad. Terribly named, but uh, it's awesome. It's, it's pretty cool. Yes, right? That's what it seems like. If you want to think of the fighting games, but way proto. <laughs> yes, Chiptune, you're speaking of something called MK. I'll pretend I don't know what that is. <laughs> and there's a few other games here that Artworks has done. The way that they did advertising with these single page uh, uh, companies would want to get as many games as they can with the prices and then just a quick blurb. Notice there's no pictures or screenshots. You have to read about the game and decide if you want to mail in to get that game. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, right, 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 Marshall. Thankfully, we don't have to do any of the typing in here on the show. All right, keep on going. And uh, next one is about the voice box. We've already seen and talked about the Votrax voice system that was available on the, uh, the Apple II. Here is just speech synthesis for the Atari 400 and 800. I don't believe we've seen a game that's incorporating it heavily on this computer yet. And then over here is another game that we, we didn't play on the show. We don't really do uh, trivia games, but it's Trivia Trek and what they thought about this one. That is one thing that's fun reading the magazines here on the show is we also showcase a few of the games that we're not going to play in its entirety. Oh, right. Yeah, that's going to come later, Paul, for sure. All right, flip it on to the next page. Is how you mix CTIA and GTIA graphics with all the code involved. Yes, those sweet graphics on your Atari. If you want to get serious about programming, oh, there we go. Pocket Programming Aid down here in the bottom left. Only $9.95. MasterCard and Visa still around. And over here on the right side is some software reviews. We'll uh, breeze by that one too. If any of the software strikes your fancy, go ahead and let me know in the chat if you see something that you remember uh, seeing. I do remember this over here on the right side. Elephant. Uh, memory systems. In other words, it's the company that was designing the disks as, don't worry, it will never forget your information. I remember this on the sleeves for some five and a quarter floppy disks. Yes, right? Where does the graphic violence come in? Let's get to the graphic violence. Awesome. All right, so next page is Infocom. Oh, man. And every single one of these games we've already seen. Zork 1, 2, and 3, Deadline, and Starcross. You can see at the top, Infocom. Oh, it's awesome. At, the, at this point, um, all the games that we've we've seen by Infocom um, have, have have not. They've all been text adventure games, but some of the highest quality text adventure games. While I did rate Starcross slightly lower than the other ones, uh, these were still you know in the, the the five and four and a half star range. Th th this is still the best way to do adventure games right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Super Nintendo Dan. It sounds like. Uh, mash all right so let's keep going to the next page <laughs> relieving the floating point blues and it's prevalent on several home computers we can breeze by that one moving on to the next page and coming up next oh here we go after the floating point blues fix we have an ad for frogger which has officially released on the atari um, uh, home computer and the Apple II. And at this point, there's already uh, official Frogger that we had already seen. And um, the, the very first time we saw it official was here on the NEC PC 6001 in Japan, brought to us by Konami. But you can see from the footage, this Frogger on this computer in Japan really doesn't look much like Frogger. And it played pretty slow. Uh, it, it is tile-based, and, and it reminded me of some of the other games we had seen on the Commodore VIC-20 or some of the lower-end Frogger games. But it's just so bizarre because you're playing as a stick figure. You're not even Frogger. <laughs> it really shows the drastic difference between the East and the West right now. But th this, again, was uh, a while back. So th th this, th this port we saw um, more like 1981. 
because the they, Konami brought it out pretty quick. Yeah, right? Oh, Freeway. Yeah, that's another really good Frogger variant. But this ad is more relating to the Frogger that we saw on the Atari. And this is Frogger on the Atari home computer. The, the first version, the Sierra Online version. And you can see that the the way that this one plays and sounds, it is, it's it's so good. It's, it's an excellent port of Frogger, considering all the variants we've already seen up to this point. There already is official Frogger you can play right now on the Atari VCS that we saw in August 1982. And then the Coleco handheld was official in September 1982. At least we saw here on the show. And the, the Frogger games we're going to be playing... Uh, even more. Soon we're going to be seeing Frogger on the TRS-80, the Philips Video Pack, and then there's a, n a new computer that I'll leave as a surprise, but we'll also see Frogger on that new computer before we end 1982. All right, so after Frogger, I can't get enough Frogger. I love Frogger. All right, flipping on the next one. This one's a pretty obscure one. Race in Space. Race in Space was... Th this artwork looks amazing. I think we showcased the artwork when we, we played this too. Uh, I gave it a around the average range for all the games you could play, but it was it's brought to us by analog software, by the mag the magazines themselves. This is pretty much just Space Race, w w which was back in the 70s. I'm talking about the arcade game that you're the rocket starting at the bottom of the screen and you slowly make your way up to the top. That that's all this is essentially, but it's for your Atari home computer. So it's, eh. I feel like when we play games that are almost uh, five years old or older, they're just not as imp impressive anymore. Oh, no way. I don't believe it, Chiptune. You're speaking again of things that don't make sense to me. <laughs> Over here on the right side is something even better. Uh, this one is uh, surprising because it is yet again another game that is lost. I have no footage of Sunday Driver. There is no copies of Sunday Driver that I know of anywhere. If anyone has any information on this, look at this full page ad. It looks awesome. Sunday Driver is a lost video game. So if you know where we can get a, a copy or play this, I would love to check it out. It says it has uh, four scenarios to choose from. Beat the clock as you drive while avoiding pedestrians, other cars, and obstacles. There's other versions. It's winter. You're on ice slicked roads. And uh, in game three, it's nighttime. Don't hit ghosts. If it sounds easy, try the 007 option. It's you against them on twisty roads. I, I want to know what this is. Yes, right? Yeah, it it exactly. It's like vaporware from November 1982. <laughs> it does look that, that, that way, right? So... I'd love to play the game because I don't know if this is scrolling like Monaco GP or if it's a top-down racing uh, driving game like a sprint or indie uh, that we saw in the arcades. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, right? It might still just play like Dodge em. I'm interested in the other game modes, though, but I have no idea what it looks like, how it plays. I'd love to get my hands on it. This is only by analog software, so just like uh, Race in Space. Look at that artwork, man. Race in Space... It's way too good. You you know what it is. It's just two rockets that slowly go to the top of the screen. So yeah, Sunday Driver, a highlight of another era of video games. There's so many video games that we've lost, and there's another one. Drop me a line if you have it. Let's flip on. <laughs> yeah, right? I hope not. <laughs> Over here on the left side, we have Atari announcing the Atari 400 and 800. And over here, we have Budget Worksheet 2. Yeah, we don't care about Budget Worksheet 2. I'll keep flipping on. And then we have Norum, uh, which is more application software. It used to be mostly games. This uh, eighth mag the eighth issue has less games than the other ones that we've, play that we've seen. And then we have uh, American Software over here, which is... Okay, that's just more application software. Flip it on, we have Beginner's Basic. And then uh, over on the right side, this one's an interesting one. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing this one soon. I don't think we've seen anything by Bram Incorporated, but it's called Attack at EPCYG4. <laughs> it's a terrible name. Yes, right? <laughs> I remember these games in the magazines we could type in, but now it's not games. It's mostly application software. So there you go. It's Atari 400 and Atari 800. This game we will be seeing soon. So look out. Coming out on Chronologically Gaming very shortly. <laughs> Let's flip on to the next one. No way. Jim Pearson. Over here on the right. Yeah, this shows you the, the, the side of gaming that's already getting some 
extreme content, man. And it's all three of Jim Pearson's games. And I, yeah, all three are on the uh, Atari home computer that we played. And Med Systems Software uh, also did this one. But uh, Jim Pearson's games were The Institute, which is you trying to get yourself out of a mental hospital. Awesome. And there's even real-time elements. Even though th These are all text adventure games, by the way. All text adventure games. Lucifer's Realm, you enter the kingdom of Satan. And you discover a revolution in the making headed by Adolf Hitler. Yes, it still blows me away that's a game. Only 20 bucks. It's all text adventure game. But look at this. The, 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 the way that they're describing these games seems out of this world. And we played all three of these here on the show. The Institute, Lucifer's Realm, and Paradise Threat. All three are just crazy ideas for text adventure games. <laughs> you can see the artwork. It's extreme, man. Very extreme. And then we go over to graphic violence. This is it. What is graphic violence? Automatically choose assembly language. It calls machine language subroutines faster than the same in basic. Wait a second. It's a non-technical explanation how to use graphic violence. So seven axes. Wait, graphic violence is... I, I was so excited for graphic violence. What a jip. You know what this is? This is false advertising. This is some of the things that could cause the video game crash in North America. Graphic violence is just a basic language code for setting up a sub subroutine. It has nothing to do with... I thought it was a game, a type in game. Darn. Oh, no way, Atari and Web 2000. That's some good info. That's as far as we have. There's no, no one made copies. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, Paul, Empire of the Overmind was such a big one. Most of the magazines that we've read, they keep bringing up Empire of the Overmind. And I actually thought it was a really well done adventure game. But after playing all the adventure text adventure games up to this point, Empire of the Overmind is like, it's all right. You know, it's okay. But I mean, look, look at this. We got stuff by Jim Pearson. <laughs> that stuff's crazy, man. All right, flipping on. Look at this. All this by graphic violence. And it's not a game. Look at this. It's still going. Yep, demo, graphic violence demo. Man, it, I really want it to be... <laughs> oh, okay, so it looks like it has something... They're showing us a screenshot of some shots being fired, but it looks like it's not... I, I was expecting a game we could have typed in. That's too bad. All right, and then coming up next, we have more offerings from lots of different companies. Over here on the left side is uh, from Datasoft. I believe we've seen everything over here. Shooting Arcade, Probe One, Caverns of Mars, Clowns and Balloons, Micro Painter. Oh, there it is. The one I rave about almost every episode because I love Frogger. Pacific Coast Highway by Datasoft. One of the best ways to play Frogger. And there's Canyon Climber too. Spell Wizard and Text Wizard. Yeah, we're not playing those in the show. We want games here. Just games. Over here on the right side, Synapse Software. Uh, we have not played everything here. We have played Seamus. Excellent. Excellent. One of the best games you can play on any home computer right now. We have not seen Fort Apocalypse yet. We will be seeing that. But looks like we need to order now. We'll save 15%. $25.46. Quick. Let's order it now. And then we got the Centipede, which they actually called. Oh, it's from, wait, it's called Centipede. Yeah, from Atari. Yeah, there. Okay. So it, Synapse Software is just in the middle. Frogger and Temple of Apshai are outside that. But um, the rest of these, Slime, Protector, Nautilus, yeah, great games. And Chicken. Chicken's, um, it's, it's pretty much Breakout or the Clowns and Balloons style game. But it's, you know, it's done very well. Presentation's done great. <laughs> it does. I can't believe the Seamus character. Yeah, he does look like that. We saw whenever they were in the, in the manual, that's how they, that's how they drew him. And we don't care about File Manager 800. We're not playing that one. That's not a game. All right, still flipping on. We got some specials and then color graphics modes. Keep moving on from there. Keep going. Keep going. And then, yep, it's different graphics modes to check out or play. Very nice. Keep going. And then we have, <laughs> here's the number one terminal illness, slow delivery syndrome. Cute. All right, keep going after that. No way. Look at this. Coming up for the holiday season. Atari Christmas music. Played on the pokey chip inside your Atari. <laughs> They're already getting ready for the, the, the holiday season. Nice. 
And then we got $5,000 in royalties, whatever that is. And then over here is Airstrike. We already played that one. It's all right, Scramble style game. And this one's interesting. This one's not really a game, but check it out. A Dungeons & Dragons character generator that you could get on a cassette or disc right now. That's awesome. <laughs> I saw the comment about Frogger. Yeah, it, it didn't look that way either. This one's massive type in. Whoa. How about that? That's pretty cool. And then we have systems by Atari and Apple. Looks pretty good. Chomper. Intelligent language for the arcade. Moving on after that. And then missing capabilities in Atari Basic. Nice. After that. Keep going on. Oh, here we go. This one is another game we didn't showcase on the show. This is called Labyrinths by PCA. This one's a text-only role-playing game. Uh, we skipped this one. Uh, if you really want me to play this one on the show, I would. It's it's bare bones. It's, it's almost like the games that Analog Computing did. So another example of here's the game. We're not really going to play it. The same thing with Computer Exchange. It's a stock market simulation game. Sorry, PCA. You don't get the chronologically gaming treatment. Except now. That's our that's only mention of, the, of those games. All right, let's flip on to the next one. Oh, no way. Android Attack. Look at this. Yes, for your Atari. This is like uh, Berserk. It's, it's a Berserk-style game. We saw this in uh, June 1982. Fight your way through the top-secret underground laboratory. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it, it's even showing off a few of the screens that, of how it works. But then over here on the right, oh, look at this. This is... This is cutthroat advertising. Crazy Shootout is the better Berserk game right here on the right side. What? I'm amazed they did that. That's pretty That's pretty funny. That's actually the better one. But here's what's interesting about November 1982. Reading this magazine, you really can't tell. If you were reading the magazine, you, you don't have a, a really good gauge of which one is the better game. But I'll tell you, Crazy Shootout is the better one. That's for sure. And then finally, the back of the magazine has Preppy. There it is. The artwork that we already saw from before. Very, very well done game. And I'd say it's on par with the official Frogger with the way it plays, animates, uh, color, graphics. It, it's it's very much like Frogger, but it's just, it's polished. It's very, very well done. Awesome. So there you go. There's the entire eighth issue of Analog Computing. We will keep reading magazines. We will keep playing every single video game, giving you all the highlights of what's going to be happening in 1982. And November is just beginning here on Chronologically Gaming. Next time, be sure to tune in on the show because I don't care if you want to call it a console, a portable arcade system, whatever you want to call it, it's the release of one of the best hardware gaming devices ever. That's it for today, and like I always say, reading a magazine about gaming is experiencing the culture of gaming. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.